Hello neighbors, it's Brad here at eTrailer and today we're taking a look and installing the Kurt 4-pole trailer wiring harness on a 2019 Nissan Rogue. We're going to have our 4-pole living just kind of tucked over here or you can even put it in your storage compartment so it's out of sight until you're ready to tow. Then all you'll need to do is drape this over this weather stripping here. Just make sure you don't have it right where the latch is and it's perfectly fine for this to close down on it as it's not going to damage the wiring. Four pole is going to be the way that you're going to attach to your trailer to get the light functions to go from your vehicle to the taillights on the trailer, giving you the turn signals as well as your running lights and brake lights, keeping you safe and legal and letting the people behind you know what you're intending to do. Now our wiring feeds back into a module that's going to protect our vehicle from any back feed and that way we're not going to damage our factory electrical. Now speaking of factory electrical, it's going to use factory style plug so it's really plug and play the only thing that you're really going to have to do that isn't is using a butt connector to tie in your power wire and that's going to have to route up to your battery where you're going to put a fuse holder and a ring terminal and just attach it to your terminal so it's pretty easy overall you're going to be pulling back some panels to plug those in but shouldn't take you too much longer than about an hour or so uh, routing under the vehicle can get a little bit tricky but i'm going to show you how i did everything that way we can get your trailer wiring installed to begin our installation, we're going to need to open up our rear hatch. And we're going to be gaining access to right behind our tail light here, and that way we can make our connections. Now we're going to need to gain access to this panel. And to get to this panel, we're going to have to actually remove our scuff panel. And this is also going to be the route that we run our wiring over to our passenger side. So in order to get this out, you're going to see right here where the latch is, there's going to be a plastic piece. We're going to want to take this out of the way. And then there's also going to be plastic push pins. There's going to be one here. And as you kind of follow your hands over in this indent, there'll be another. So we'll go ahead and get those taken out. So in that little notch, you're just going to want to pry out the center. So I'm using a trim panel tool. If you don't have one of these, you can actually use a flathead screwdriver and it should work just as well. Once you kind of pop that out, a lot of times you can just get that with your hands. Now, during the whole process, you're going to want to have a nice spot to keep your hardware. That way it makes it easier for reinstallation. Now to get the scuff panel off, it's pretty easy, but we're going to want to lift this up because you have a plastic ledge down here that kind of gets stuck under. So just to pull this out, just take your time here. You're going to want to kind of pull up and out. And then once you get one side there, you can kind of work your way down. You can get the other side as well. And then this should be easily removed. So we'll go ahead and set this aside. We're going to be pulling this panel out. That way we can gain access to the wires. In order to kind of get that to be a little bit easier, we'll take our cargo tray out and then we can set that aside. Now we have our cargo hook here. We're going to want to pop this cap open and that's going to gain us access to the hardware that attaches it because this becomes a mounting point for our plastic. So just kind of peel back on this. Might have to pull this loop out of the way. And then we can see with this opened up, that should be a 10 millimeter. So we'll go ahead and get that removed. You can also use a Phillips screwdriver to get this off as well. You can pull this whole assembly out and keep it together and set this aside. Now to give myself a little bit more leverage to pop the clips along here, I can take this panel off and that way we can kind of grab along here to make it a little bit more uh, evenly distributed. Now we're just going to kind of work our way here. There's going to be clips along this way and they're going to pop as you go. So just kind of give some outward pressure, work your way up and just take your time here. And if you need to, you can put your trim panel tool or a flathead screwdriver or pry bar along here if you need a little bit more leverage to pop these out. I'm also going to pull this cap off as there should be hardware that keeps it attached. And that's again just a 10 millimeter, so we'll get that removed. There's also one back here. We may not have to remove that, but just to be safe, we'll go ahead and get that one off as well. We're going to go ahead and look for the plug that's going to match up to our wiring harness. So seeing that our plug looks like this, it looks to be that this is going to be our plug that we're going to tie into. And this T is just basically going to jumper in between the two. And it's a same factory style plug, so this is going to be pretty easy. We'll just pop this clip out here and push on this tab and these should separate. Then we'll just take our yellow, brown, and red wire and we're going to just plug these in accordingly. Oh, 
right next to where we plugged in, you're gonna see this factory ground, and we're gonna be using that for our ground, which is gonna be our white wire that has the ring terminal attached. So go ahead, you can take this out. And then I'm gonna just go ahead and you'll see there's a flat portion of the ring terminal that will sit more flush. So we're gonna use that. We'll just feed that same 10 millimeter through there and just make sure that we get all of those grounds reattached properly before tightening it down. Now before we tuck our module away, I wanna go ahead and attach my power wire. It's gonna make it a little bit easier to make this connection. So grab your spool of black wire and we'll just strip off one end and then using the supplied butt connector we'll go ahead and make the attachment point to our black wire now with any connection with the butt connectors you're going to want to give it just a slight tug that way you know for sure that it's clamped down it's not going to come loose over time now the rest of this power wire we're going to feed through the grommet and that way we can run it underneath the vehicle up to the battery and if you tuck this back you can see a factory wire loom that goes into a grommet here with some wires passing in we shouldn't even have to enlarge this hole so i'm going to go ahead and take the end of our black wire and just feed that through I'm just going to kind of push through our grommet here and we should be able to get this wire fed in and uh, we'll just put it enough to where we can pull it from underneath. Now with our green wire we're just going to route this across where that scuff panel was and we're looking for the exact same connection as this side so we're going to be pulling off that panel to gain access and just plugging this in. It's going to be just the same we plugged into a similar style clip and I'm gonna just tuck this back and we can get this panel back in place. And as far as that green wire, it can just kind of run along here. Once we put our scuff panel back in place, it'll be tied up. You can throw a few zip ties along here if you want, but uh, we're gonna be tying up all this wiring first. So as long as you kind of take some of the slack out, move it over, that's where we're gonna kind of zip tie up some wires. So we'll get over there and get that all cleaned up. Now that power wire that I fed through our grommet, if you're having trouble, you can kind of poke it with a screwdriver and just push that through and once you get enough through you should be able to reach up here and grab it if not you can pull this panel down and you'll gain access to it but I'm gonna go ahead just to make it a little bit easier for cleaning up our wires I'm gonna just pull out our extra slack now this is eventually gonna run up to our battery so uh, having it kind of right where it's coming through in this grommet is gonna be nice because we'll be able to pass over this exhaust without really having that as a worry I've gone ahead and zip tied this up it does come with a double back uh, adhesive tape but sometimes I just question whether or not that's gonna stick the entire time so using a zip tie I know that this isn't gonna rattle around over time and so I've just kind of cleaned up the wires I'm gonna go ahead and since our four poles gonna be living inside the vehicle I'm gonna kind of tuck this under the plastic and that way it's easily accessible now when routing our power wire we're gonna make our way up to the driver's side of the engine bay and that's where our battery is gonna be located you're gonna to want to stay away from anything that's moving that can potentially damage the wire and also anything that's hot so that's gonna be your exhaust and generally your suspension and axle so the best way that I've found, at least on this one, since it's all wheel drive, is passing it up over this rear cross member. I've gone ahead and just zip tied it up. It's out of the way of things. And then I kind of use this brace for the fuel tank to run over. And I'll be pulling it through the frame rail using just an airline tube. This is just a nice, easy way to pull this through, make sure it's protected. The other way that you can do it is routing it up over the cross member, just making sure that it's not in the way of any suspension. And then as you make your way over, you're gonna kind of route it the same way that I have it up to here, and then just use these brackets. Now, the tricky part is, is sometimes the wiring lengthwise can get maybe a little bit short if you're going back and forth because once you route down you're going to have to also pass that back over to get up to there so that's why i've chosen to do it this way um, if you don't have anything to pull that through totally understand but just a long piece of wire um, or this is an airline tube if you have something that's somewhat flexible to feed through here this is a great way to do it and what we'll do is just take our wire end and just tape it to our pull wire And that's gonna allow us to be able to pull that through and it's gonna be protected here in the frame. 
Now we're going to be using that same fish wire technique to get this up to our battery in the engine compartment. And again, we're going to want to make sure that we're not hitting any suspension, the drive shaft, or any exhaust. So we'll go ahead, we'll get this passed up, pull it through, and that way our wire will be ready to connect to our positive terminal. So I've gone ahead and pulled up our power wire using that fish wire technique and just kind of made sure that I attach it to a few different points so it's not loose in the engine bay. And we're going to need to connect our fuse holder. Now make sure the fuse is not in play. Uh, we want to make sure that we don't have power going through this until after everything's connected. So hang tight on pulling the fuse in. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, you can see I have a little bit of extra power wire here. So I'm going to cut that off and then kind of just plan on putting your fuse holder somewhere in this area area here so just make sure you have enough slack to make that connection we'll just go ahead and strip this back and then our fuse holder is already stripped back a little bit here so we'll go ahead and take our butt connector and make this connection and then the other end of our fuse holder is just going to get the ring terminal and that way we can attach it to the positive terminal on the battery so you can go ahead and take that and crimp that down And then we're going to be attaching it to this via this nut here. It's just going to go on the stud. So we'll go ahead and get this taken off. So we'll go ahead and put our ring terminal here and then we'll just tighten this down. Now when tightening this down, you're going to want to see if you have clearance for this to cap back down. Um, so you might have to just route that. In worst case, you can always put a little notch here, but uh, I think this should still be able to close if we kind of just tuck it off to the side. Now we can go ahead and put our fuse in the fuse holder. And then I'm just going to use the rest of the zip ties in the kit to kind of clean this wire up and make sure it's not loose in the engine bay. So now that we have everything connected, before getting our interior panels all back together, I want to go ahead and test to make sure that it's working. Now I'm using a four pole tester and these are really nice because it keeps it specific to the vehicle. Uh, the other way to test is going to be hooking it up to your trailer. But if your trailer has any faulty wiring, it could give you a false negative that maybe that this is okay, but the trailer's not. So this is a good way to do it. Either way, we're going to just run through the light sequence. So we'll be doing our running lights, our turn signals and brake lights and make sure that, that they light up. First, we'll start off with our running lights. Next, we'll go ahead and do our left turn signal, our right turn signal, and then finally our brakes. Now that we know that everything's working properly, we can go ahead and get our interior back, and all that's left to do is start towing. And that was a look and installation of the Kurt four-pole trailer wiring harness on a 2019 Nissan Rogue.